Well, we are going to start with uh, our presentation about jet development. Uh, the idea uh, of this presentation is to talk about the workflow, the procedure to help and collaborate with JET. Uh, JET is our extension directory, and the idea behind is that we are going to uh, try to improve the, the system, to submit changes, and to learn, to learn how to, uh, to collaborate. But one of the uh, ideas that I want to introduce is that JET is our, is our site, so we have to treat JET as it was uh, our own uh, site and we have to collaborate with it because what, it has been stable for a long time and I think that this is a good time to start to improve it and to change. Uh, hopefully we are not going to uh, destabilize the current code, we are going to try to improve it and really enhance how it works. That's the, the idea behind uh, I am Miguel <coughs> Sanchez, and I am an extension developer. I have, uh, have published several extensions, and I've been working with uh, Joomla from 2007. I lived in Buenos Aires as <coughs> one year ago, and now I'm living, I actually living in, in Spain. Um, I also a Joomla volunteer and the Jet Marketing Manager. Uh, one of my ideas about Jet marketing is that we need better communicate how jet works and how to collaborate. This is part of this process to improve our communication and to be to have an open process with the whole community. And I also collaborate with Joomla uh, Basquad in the Stack Change and also write the English and Spanish articles for Joomla Mass. These are my extensions. Uh, the idea is all, I am always trying to create extension and products to integrate, uh, uh, to better integrate Joomla with the world. For example, I, I have an idea that we have to look Joomla in a better system integrated with the whole world. Uh, so I create extensions to publish content to social networks, to Facebook, Twitter, and 20 more social uh, networks. And uh, recently I've been working with the concept of mobile applications for Joomla to experiment the idea how to integrate uh, mobile applications with Joomla because I think that's the role we have to uh, uh, visit to improve, really improve Joomla and how it integrates with the whole world. In this presentation we are going to start uh, talking about what is Jet and uh, in the second part of this presentation, we're going to really uh, visit how to uh, submit changes to Shell. To uh, the, the changes are going to be, the fixes are going to be published in some way semi-automatically, so we have to be very careful what, what, what uh, we are going to do with Shell. All of us are Shell uh, users, so I don't, I, I don't have to explain what is Shell, okay? Yeah. Or do you, do you have any not jet user? No. Okay. Um, what do you expect about this presentation? I expect a way to contribute to this. Okay. In fixing some bugs. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'll expect uh, to see the future of the jet, maybe some changes, because uh, maybe the latest version. Yeah. Maybe it's not quite useful, and yeah. maybe it's uh, like it improvements in yeah. how to contribute as well. Yeah. I, I, I agree that from a, a view, the, the jail is not very useful. Even though uh, there's a view that it's not useful, it's a great source of traffic. Right now, even in the current site, the, the, live, the site is live, it's running a uh, whole uh, week, it's at 7.45. Uh, and it is safe because it's always running. So we have to be very careful what we can uh, try to uh, test and submit because we have to keep the same stability and performance that we have today. So we can be we have to be very careful what we uh, change and start slowly. And, uh, and we, in the future, I think we can really uh, install. 
possible to create new powerful features, but carefully. That's, that's the, the idea behind this presentation also. As you know, uh, this is gel. Uh, uh, you can search and find extensions. You can install it. You can write extensions and submit reviews. Um, these are the top rated extensions. Uh, every one of us wants to be there, but you know that it's difficult. Uh, but if you we have, have, if you would have taken the picture of seven, the yeah. events would be there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the idea is that with our changes, our extensions, I'm not going to, to be there, okay? <laughs> this is going to be a uh, to, to clarify, our changes are going to improve the site, but not to show our extension there. Okay? For example, this is one of my extensions, but I have been, I have been paying at Google AdWords to show it there, so. That's kind of cheating. Yeah. You have to pay for Google AdWords. How much did you pay? I can't remember. I don't know. It's running a campaign. Uh, yes. And for example, if I search with social media, we are going to have my extension. <laughs> that's, 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 that's totally a coincidence. Yeah, you have to choose social media by chance. Yeah. <clears throat> because I'm interested in that area. Okay. <laughs> now, we are talking about Jed. Jed uh, only accepts uh, extensions that uh, they are open source. And we all know that we include this uh, license and this idea to restrict because we believe in collaboration, community, and freedom to choice. That's one of the idea behind Gel. Um, of course, uh, there is a whole process to review extensions to check what extensions uh, do have inside. <coughs> we are not allowing encryption or restriction to where you can run a. An extension. Uh, I restriction. There are also restrictions in to how to promote and, uh, for example, restrict with the commercial license the extension. And this, this is part of the process that we uh, enforce to guarantee a level of quality in our of all of extension publication in general. Why extensions are unpublished? This is a uh, the most common question that we have, we are always answering tickets. Uh, most of the time, there are broken links. Uh, uh, Gen checks that there are no broken links in the extension, so that's the, one of the uh, ways that is uh, automat the extension are automatically unpublished. So we have to be, be very careful with Gen with uh, broken links, and there are a lot of uh, other reasons that I'm. Uh, extension can be unpublished, for example, if it's unvulnerable uh, or it has been reported. And of course, there's a lot of extension that try to implement prohibited, prohibited uh, marketing tactics. So, you could deal with uh, reports of call home functions? Call home functions. For example, we style uh, an, an extension that it calls the uh, developer site for ah, okay, okay. some motive that okay, okay. we cannot be sure that's totally prohibit, prohibit. Uh, we have to be very careful and a lot of extensions are reported for that reason. Well, our challenge today is that we have more than 7,000 extensions uh, published. Uh, we have a lot of reviews and we are processing around uh, more than almost 4,000 tickets per year with uh, reports, uh, questions, uh, broken extension, unpublished extension, a lot of uh, tickets. And the whole team is currently devoted only to answer tickets. Um, the idea that we are going to have after this presentation a new develop the development team that is going to try to improve the, the site. Uh, we have to remember that this is a big directory with complex data structures. It's not that is easy. It's a challenge. Uh, from a point of view of com 
uh, computational uh, complexity, uh, it's very it's quite interesting to work with algorithms and how to uh, process the data structures. So it's, yeah, and of course it's managed by volunteers. We have to only we have to always remember that we are going to uh, try to change a system that is working, and we only have a limited time. For example, we can collaborate with one or two hours per week, for example. Uh, so we have to be very careful about what we can do with that time, because our time is limited. Looking into the evolution of JET, JET has been with us since 2005. We can find Google references about JET even before Joomla 1. And also we can, we can watch how the, we, we can verify how the design has evolved with time. Uh, and for example, in 2012, uh, JET have more than uh, 10,000 extensions. That was a huge challenge because at that time we had a three Joomla versions, a stable version at the same time. We have the 2.5, 2.1.5, 2.5, and the Joomla 3 at the same time. And after that, we began to deprecate the, the Joomla 1 and Joomla 2, and at the end, we ended with a current number of extensions. New opportunities. What we expect about this meeting, about uh, after this session, we are going to be implementing new features and improvements. Uh, we Joomla.org is going to be redesigned, and they are right now working the new template for Joomla.org. Um, this new line of uh, template design is going to be implemented in all Joomla sites and. At some point, it's going to be also uh, implemented in JET. So this is going to be an opportunity to really improve the the JET design with a new uh, framework, for example, with Booster 3. And from my point of view, I would like to have a JET mobile application. So in that way, we can search for extensions uh, in our mobile devices and have a, a new view or how Joomla can integrate with the rest of the world. Uh, we have a, a big team of collaborators. We have to remember always that every one of us can only collaborate with a couple of hours, one hour per day, and that's the resources we have to manage to really try to uh, improve the site and work with tickets and everything else. I'm going to quote uh, two presentations about volunteering. Uh, they are, we have to remember that we are always uh, committed to freely offer our uh, efforts. And that's the uh, main uh, assets and the main resources that we can manage. And with that resources, we are going to uh, improve and uh, manage the, the site. That's the, the main idea behind. About coders, of course, this presentation is about development, but development is half of the uh, opportunity. We need uh, volunteers that uh, give us uh, opinions to better uh, understand how, uh, how to improve the site. Because sometimes we only need to fix a small fix in the user interface. But there is a lot of uh, there's a whole process to review the site and really understand what we can what we have to improve. Uh, we are going to check some uh, reported bugs in general, and we are going to verify that it's not that complex what users are really asking. So we can implement <coughs> huge improvements with small tweaks in the code. So uh, we need opinions and people committed to uh, help us to test and review the site. That's one of the ideas. Um, our idea is that, uh, well, this is from Sander presentation, 
or rent. I can't remember what, where, what the presentation was this idea from, but we need only one week per hour. If every one of us in this room, we collaborate with one hour of our life to Jeff, we are going to be really improving uh, the site. Uh, and this presentation is about the process to improve the, the site. Uh, we publish our monthly reports in our uh, group, in the volunteers portal. You can check what our work and what we publish every month. And we are going to start now talking about the process, the process itself. Questions until now? This is happening only an introduction. Well, this is an, an open process. Uh, the idea is that everyone can uh, give opinions and try to uh, submit new things. Uh, until now, the process was closed, so we were not able to check the code and give our opinions. So now we are starting this new process. It's going to have a major impact in our community. And we have to be very careful what, because uh, the author, the author of new changes, is going to take the hit of uh, opinions and new critics, and everyone going to uh, talk about the new changes in general. Because right now we can say that it's working that in one way, and we know the, the current opinions, the current uh, community uh, feedback. So we are going to have new feedback about the, the new changes. So part of the major impact of these changes is going to be how we manage the changes, how to communicate that we're going to be uh, testing new things, creating a new interface, for example. And we have to uh, communicate, communicate the changes and that what is going to be the new process, uh, the new features we're going to release. So we need volunteers to audit the code, send suggestions. For example, if we propose a change in the scoring system, it's going to affect all of the extension developers, so all of us are going to be affected <coughs> by the changes in the scoring system. So we have to be very careful or publish that we are going to change the new algorithm in that way. Uh, so everyone can be ready to, okay, it's, it's changing, and I, I can agree or, or not, but it's going to change. For example, we are we have we are experienced developers and we have uh, suffered changes from, from uh, Google. For example, when CEO is changing, everyone talks about the new changes that Google have released. Uh, for example, forcing SSL in every site. Uh, that kind of changes that affect CEO is similar of what we are trying to to implement here. Well, the process started in January with the developer agreement. All uh, the new developers, to have access to the source code, they have to sign the, the agreement. Why you have to uh, sign the agreement? Because the, the agreement uh, talks about a life cycle that different from Joomla CMS. When we download the code from Joomla CMS, and install it in our site, and create a new site, we are responsible for the new site. So in this, in this case, uh, Joomla is the responsible of Jet. So all information and the code that publishes and works uh, in, in Joomla Jet has uh, to be uh, backed by Joomla. So this agreement uh, talks about that we are giving our copyright to Joomla our changes in the code, that we are not copy-pasting uh, source code from other sources, that this is an original work that we are submitting, and uh, in uh, one of the ideas is that uh, our, co our collaboration with Jet, we can think that this our, is it is our free time, but it's not, it's a privilege to work with Jet. So the idea is that we have to be uh, honored, or I feel honored to be collaborating with Jeff. So we need to feel that uh, 
sense of empowerment that we have to really work with them. In general, we have our we have our own lead group where we can communicate. We have a group for development where we share ideas. For example, at that time we were talking about uh, the uh, virtualization. Another concept that we have behind uh, this life cycle is that we are going to submit changes and they are going to be delivered delivered to the site uh, at some point. So mm, there is no, uh, there, it, this is not a process like we are used to because we are not creating uh, for a site that is offline. And we are going to send the whole site and publish uh, a new site in, in a hosting. This is a continuous operation, so we are not going to stop share. To, we are not going to stop share to make changes. We are going to submit changes, and the site is going to be alive the whole time. So the source code, uh, the source code is not going to be disabled. To submit a change. It's going to be always running. So we are going to submit changes, and the change is going to be applied live. So this is a whole different way to work. And we're going to check the technology behind to allow this kind of uh, continuous deployment. We are going to be working in Jira. Jira is for our, our uh, ticket management system where, where we receive uh, input from our users. We receive bug fixes, uh, bug uh, reports. We have we receive rep new improvements. We have received a new feature requests. Uh, we discuss the idea in Jira, and if the Jira uh, idea is approved or confirmed, uh, a, priori a priority priority is assigned. So we are we are expecting to have developers uh, solving this. Bugs and submitting the changes to Bitbucket. Bitbucket is a hit uh, tool similar to GitHub, uh, and we are when in this hit repository we are going to have all changes and a Jenkins server that is a robot that applies commands in a live configuration uh, going to uh, auto publish these changes. To yeah. Uh, this is the main idea behind that we have to uh, test um, and know how the process is going to work. Of course, we can improve that process in our experience. Uh, this is the Jira that you are going to have access after you sign the agreement. No, I think that you can create the no, you, you can create the Shira account without signing the, the agreement. So everyone can reply tickets. Yeah. This is the re repository. So uh, a first step to uh, start collaborating is to clone this repository. Uh, in this repository, we can check that there is a parent file that's going to create a server in our local machine. Um, this is, I recommend a previous experience with Vagrant and Docker before running this virtualization technology because you have to first start your virtual machine, you have to uh, launch your container, and you have to uh, work in your local machine, in the local server that's going to be similar to the live site. To give you a, a preview of the requirements for development, you have to be uh, able to run a web server in your uh, computer with a virtual virtualization. Uh, background and virtual box are requirements for this development and knowledge of uh, Docker. Uh, from my experience, uh, I, have, I have verified that you need at least uh, a desktop, a modern desktop with an uh, i5 uh, processor and 8 gigabytes of memory. 
and to give you an idea of uh, what powers uh, Joomla Jet, uh, we have a server with uh, 16 cores and uh, 22 gigabytes of RAM running with light speed and PHP uh, 5.6. And uh, one of the features or that I have discovered with in the, for this presentation that there's a relic monitor uh, integrated to keep the statistics about the live site to detect if the Joomla jet falls. Any questions? Anything else? Are you going to migrate to PHP 7 sometime soon? Yeah, sure. Because right now... Uh, Same because uh, it's a bit slow sometimes to the website. I don't know if that is or not. I think that the site is not slow by... Not, not always, but sometimes, like, maybe... <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there is a dynamic load yeah. uh, we have to manage, but we have to be very careful to really verify if it is a local problem or it's a network problem, because sometimes it's slow in some area of the world, so we cannot really know uh, if it, this uh, overload is affecting all users or is it it's only local problems. Sometimes you try a different connection and the problem is solved. So we have to be very careful uh, how, because when there's a chain problem in the server, everyone knows that something happened. Because you, have, you begin to receive tickets, tweets, and every, the community start to talk in leap. Jail uh, is down, what is happening? And we have to ask Rochen to check the, the server. But it's not a common problem. So I think that sometimes it's just a local network condition. Uh, at the time that JET was developed, uh, HHBM was a uh, feature of technology. Now I think that PHP 7 is going to be the next move, I think, the, the next logical move. I don't know if Facebook that <coughs> created uh, HHBM, they are if Facebook fame is already integrated to PHP 7, <coughs> but PHP 7 is very, it's just, it has been checklist, so we have to be very careful when it's really going to be really stable. For example, Ubuntu with PHP 7 was just released in the past month, so we have to be still very careful. careful. Uh, it's not even available in Amazon. So we have to wait for PHP 7. It's going to reach at some time our jet. So, to review, we need a virtual box, a, a Docker, a container, and backup and background as a command line to manage the, the whole setup. And when the machine starts, it configures a local web server. Uh, enable some local folder to synchronize with the virtual machine. So in that way you can write your code, change uh, the a file, and the, the file is synchronized with the virtual machine, and that is uh, impacted in your local gel, and you can debug or, or, work, with, or work with your configuration to, to test and develop new features. Any, qu any questions about this slide? I'm going fast there. Yeah. Is there a way to uh, develop or set it up without Kafka? Just sort of clean LAMP What? So is it possible to set up a regular LAMP stack without installing uh, It's kind of tricky because the version of MySQL is very specific to the queries that the search is doing. So it's just not nice to Right now, the idea of this virtual configuration, the machine, Docker container, and everything else, the, the idea is that we are going to have all of us, all of the developers that are going to work with Jet uh, setup, going to have the same configuration. Because in Joomla CMS, uh, we, we know that uh, Joomla CMS is compatible, compatible with 
uh, PHP 5.3, um, and that's their minimum uh, requirements. So in, J in Joomla Jet, we don't have the same requirement. We have, we have higher requirements. So this uh, configuration for the virtual machine and the Docker container installs the same environment that it is currently available in the production server. So in this way, you can sim we can simulate the same uh, performance case that is running the live site. Yeah. So for example, if we have the PHP 7, that would be a project to the then get that. Yes, we, we can, for example, change the background file and the Docker container for PHP 7. Commit that change and distribute the change on everyone. So we are going to publish in Glib. Okay, restart your machines because we have we are pushing the change to PHP 7. So all of us, uh, we are going to share the same configuration at the same time. That's the, the idea. I don't know if you answered uh, your question. Yeah. Yes, but um, it's a huge list of requirements. Yes. I think that, that will discourage <coughs> someone because you really need an engineer only to set up your workstation. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is expert level configuration for Joomla Jet. Yeah. It's a, uh, he is created in this way and it has to be in this way because we are, we are talking about a really big site uh, with a lot of performance cases that we have to meet and requirements to fill, so yeah. So we need uh, developers with knowledge of background, virtualization, uh, con containers. It's not that hard if you know some basics because I'm really not, uh, for example, for me, I'm not really working with this technology. I, uh, because I work in my local computer with Linux. So I, I prefer to work that way. But in this case, because it's a shared uh, setup for all of us, it's easier to work in this way because we are going to be managing, managing a high level of requirements between all of us. <coughs> so this is uh, the way that a team, the development team for Jet had to work. That's uh, the idea behind it. If you need any help, please contact me. I'm going to be <coughs> most uh, honored to help you. I only say that, that it's not difficult, but maybe long. So I think it could uh, discourage some, someone. Yeah, of course, but you, have, you, you have to look at this uh, methodology in a new challenge, an opportunity to learn new technology. For me, it was that challenge because I, I have to discover what background and what uh, Docker is because everyone is talking about background and Docker, that new technology for development and many of the developers are already working with that. For example, one of our competitors, you know, uh, Laravel, Laravel, uh, I, Laravel has the main idea that you have to download one image to work with Laravel. For all Laravel developers, it's like the standard stuff to have a Laravel machine in your local computer. So, go ahead. And here you have the commands to start the, the machine. It's not complicated. Once you have the background machine installed in your computer. Uh, I, cannot, I can only provide instruction for Linux, but I think that in Apple and uh, Windows are very similar. Many de Apple developers are currently working with this technology because they prefer to run a, a Linux in their own uh, Apple computers because they are, it is more uh, it is similar like the production server. So many uh, Apple developers are working with this kind of uh, tools, background, Docker, and that kind of technology. I am on the right track. Everyone on board? Um, for example, this is a screenshot from my computer. 
I, I'm not going to check in this change to shed. You are not, you are not going to uh, see any change in the title tomorrow because we were here testing, uh, playing with the, the, the code. Uh, this is just a local change. And, and you can uh, have a small data set from, I don't know, it was, I think it was created at some point of time. That is it. Yeah. Yeah. But it is consistent with the current life cycle, so it's a good data set for testing. And in Jira, in Jira, we have our tickets uh, in this uh, status. For example, when a user sends a new ticket. It is an open state. Um, if we need more information, the ticket goes to the least more info state. And after that, we, we verify the issue. Uh, and the developer has to move uh, or the, the ticket around these statuses. So you can see that at some point, there are certain command, commands that are going to be run to copy these changes from Station to testing and from testing to the final uh, life cycle. This is going to be automatically managed uh, until the last step is going to be manually copied to the life cycle. And, and the idea is that may, minor changes are going to be pushed daily. Uh, Major change is going to be published once a week. I think that we are going to also uh, publish in our blog the new changes, so in that way, yeah, yeah, yeah we have a successfully the jet de new de jet developer here. can verify that this presentation is already helping someone, so... <laughs> okay. Now, uh, JED has been created with, as a custom component. <coughs> uh, this is a custom company, it's not that complex. For example, you have nine models and nine controllers, so it's, it's a kind of extension, a custom component that every one of us can really check, read the code and change. Uh, small tweaks or anything. It's easy to read the code. Uh, and this is a good idea behind because uh, even if the initial configuration is hard, once we have the configuration ready, it's not uh, a complex system to understand because we are familiar with the concept and we have a simple model and controllers with good practices to, to review and, and improve. And in the backend, you are not going to uh, the, the regular user are not familiar with this area. This is an Angular application, and this is uh, the application that most, most uh, the backend users like uh, Jazz and Luca works every day. So work every day. So uh, this is uh, another another area that we are going to be improving, but it's not going to have a, a huge impact to the. Uh, regular users. So I think that our first commits can be oriented to improve this interface because it's going to be controlled by the team, so it's going to be easier to, to check if you are really working with the right process. For example, what our users are asking. Uh, the review system uh, has originally created with uh, certain numbers of scores and uh, users are usually submitting a, a single score but they are actually uh, looking for an option that they don't want to give an opinion about that area or it, that's not applied to the score. So 
a small tweak to interface is going to solve that zero to not needed or not uh, applicable. And you have to help me, I don't know if you know every ticket, because I, I only read <laughs> the, the first one. Uh, or oh, for example, the, the last one is when you search for an extension, there is no way to go back to uh, search results. So uh, one of the new features has to solve that navigation issues for users. We are familiar that we are used to open new tabs, so for us, as experienced Jet uh, users, we usually open new tabs, but uh, regular users are not so familiar with the, this kind of navigation, so we need to uh, include a back to search uh, results link. Uh, also, also, there's a request, for example, to include a search box in every, in, in every place, in every, in every page. So a search box in every page is going to help to easily uh, search for new things in every page. Bugs. Uh, a lot of bugs. Uh, for example, uh, we have a delay. The, the site is in English, but reviews can be submitted in different languages. So. That was a, a new feature introduced in the new development for um, that time. So we need to still improve uh, new, these new ideas of language-oriented reviews. Uh, yes. Any questions so far? <coughs> and now we are going to uh, talk about the scoring system. Uh, a scoring system uh, is not a, a theoric, 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 mathematical idea. We need a scoring system. We want a scoring system with some objective. We are not. We don't want. Uh, for example, other scoring systems or ranking systems are oriented, for example, to improve uh, Facebook revenue. For example, in Facebook advertising. Uh, Facebook ads are oriented to improve Facebook re revenue and try to uh, help to the advertiser in some way. But Google AdWords also looks for an uh, increase in Google revenue at the end because it is, they are designed at uh, advertisement algorithm. Well, in <coughs> general, we look for uh, extensions uh, that are better than the other. We try to guide users to the better extension uh, that comply with functionality, easy of, easy of use, documentation and support. So we, are, we look for a better extensions that provide better, uh, better, that performs better in that uh, dimensions. So the idea of the current scoring system is that we need New reviews in all extensions. We have. We don't want all glories in our directory. We have extensions that they are. They were very good ten years ago, but they are not going. They are not so good press, uh, until now. They have because they are not currently implemented. Or we look for new uh, extensions that provide uh, powerful functionality. So. Uh, a top extension require present reviews. Um, that means that, for example, new reviews has uh, new reviews have a, a high priority, and all reviews after uh, uh, all the reviews from more than two years ago have a lower priority. So. A top extension requires recent reviews. And the other idea behind the scoring system is that extensions have to be uh, better than the average. So extensions that are better than the average are uh, going to the 100% uh, goal, and the others are going to be lowered to a lower priority. 
So, so these are the uh, key ideas of the current uh, score system. We can be, uh, we can think that these are bad, uh, bad implementation. This is bad idea. This is not the right way to implement the scoring system. There are a lot of opinions, and every extension developer has his own uh, opinion. Um, we can change this, these ideas, but uh, we can also verify that, for example, all well-known extension developers are always asking, asking for new reviews, because new reviews improve your scoring system. Uh, if you have happy users, you're going to receive new reviews, and that's the way to go to the uh, top. Uh, an extension with uh, reviews from four years ago is not going to <coughs> have a, a better score than extension that receiving new reviews every day. Because new reviews are, uh, means that there are happy users submitting new comments. So that's the, the way that we have to work. We have to look for new reviews uh, we have to try to improve our scoring system to better reflect this idea that happy users publish new reviews. So how technically, technically uh, the scoring system works? Uh, reviews are only uh, calculated uh, taking into account about a seven day race count. Uh, after seven days, the new reviews are received and a freshness factor is calculated. Uh, extensions, uh, uh, reviews after two years are, have a lower level, uh, uh, one, one level, one priority. Uh, the recent review has a 25 factor. So after that, a normalization is uh, applied to discard out outliers. And after that, there is a, a, a radio that it is applied based on the average number of global reviews that uh, Jeff has currently in his database. For example, if we have 50, uh, the average is 50 because the volume of extension uh, average is 50. If you have more than 50 reviews, you are going to uh, have a higher rank than uh, one review. Okay? For example, if you are an extension developer, you publish your new extension, and one of your users publish one perfect review, you are not going to get a 100% uh, score, and you are not going to displays Akiva as the top rank with one review. We need, you need more reviews to reach that goal. Yeah. This is currently working this way? Yeah. I don't think so because I, I just checked so. for maps and weather for example. There's one extension with only one review, 100%. Yeah. And another extension with 88 reviews, maybe 95%. So when we order according to overall ratings, yeah. this extension with one review come on top. Yeah, it's easier to describe a model in this way, but at the end we need to check the numbers and really know uh, how the index is calculated, because there are many variables in the middle. Well, it's easier to describe the extension and the reviews in this terms, because... I just asked you, recently it happened something like that to me, because I have one extension with yeah. really good reviews and yeah. like 80, 80 something reviews. Yeah. There are some. I, and it was pretty well rated. And I received a review that it was good, but not that good. Yeah. It was maybe like 70 or 80. Yeah. And now I'm behind some extensions that have one re review with 100 points. We have to check the numbers. There is no way to really know from these uh, facts that how it is calculated. Because we can't really check the numbers. For example, one idea is that for you, you can add a new uh, tab in your... When you edit your extension, you can, have, you can have your own tab to discover how the score is calculated. That would be... Perfect. Yeah, this, this would be clever. Clarify yeah. and also help us in the back of the value system. Uh, the, the system is currently generating this information about how it is calculated. But we need to expose in 
some graphic way how the score is calculated. For, to solve these cases, because I think that you have better control of your scoring system than uh, we as developers. Uh, and in this commentary, I'm trying to separate the words, but I, I want to work together to improve the scoring system. We, we need your input, and this is the right information that we have to provide to give you the tools to, to better reports. For, yeah. So, what would be nice is that, as it's such a new login, you can see a panel where uh, it shows all the instances in the current rating. Then yeah. there's, a, there's a calculator of kind of food where you, where you, where you put, uh, if in the next one month you get like X, yeah. five reviews with 100 marks, then you will move five points of the ladder over. So, some kind of tool that kind of lets extension developers uh, extrapolate the, the gap to actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one, yeah, for, uh, for example, yesterday uh, when we were checking the scoring the scores, because we try to think, we, we think that our scoring system is going, is always going up, it's not going down. Uh, so one day we have ninety percent. The second day we have 85. Uh, there is no reviews. What happened in the middle? Why we have a lower, lower score from one day to the other? There are some cases that, for example, uh, a user deletes uh, an account. When a user deletes uh, the account, reviews are also deleted. So in that case, reviews are removed. So it's, there are certain cases we need to check how the scoring system work and why, for example, you have a lower rank. Because the user, or for example, for reporting reviews. In some cases, a, a review is reported not by the user, but another user. Okay. It, ha it can happen, and if uh, the review team <coughs> uh, acknowledges that that's a valid case, a, a review can be deleted. So there are a lot of cases that we have to take into account to really audit the system. Because it's a life cycle. We can, as developers, as extension developers, think that it's not going to change from one day to the other. But it's a life cycle, so we, can, we have to expect changes and evolution in the system and the information. It's not that theoretical case that, OK, I have 100%, tomorrow I'm going to have the same 100%. It's not in that way. You have to be very careful uh, and to know and really check the data to know how it works. So one of my ideas to include this tab to add more information about, uh, to debug the, or to know how the scoring system works. Okay. Time is over. Okay, uh, I had to, no, we are, we are okay. Uh, I, I can talk <laughs> for hours now. Uh, well, we have a new open development process. Uh, we have the right tools to implement all of these uh, changes. I'm going to uh, waiting for your comments. Um, we can join our GLIP uh, area and chat about the new changes that you have to do. Um, if, uh, if you want to change the scoring system, it's one of the main features that affect everyone. So you have to be very careful because you're going to be in this place talking about your scoring algorithm. Because right now, it's easy for me to talk about an open process and that we, we are going to need new features. But I, I remember when, for example, the current Joomla tag system was introduced, it was also a, a feature that generated a lot of comments about the new tagging system was introduced in Joomla 3. You can expect that you, if you submit a new scoring system for Jet, to be here talking about the experience about the new scoring system. So be careful with the changes. Of course, the whole team is going to, to check and review uh, because there is a lot of experience in the team uh, 
from 10 years ago until now, or what works in the scoring system, or, and what is that not work. And the idea is to start contributing, uh, audit the code, send suggestions, refer, re request for comments, feedbacks, and add new features, and test, test, test. That's the end of the presentation. I think we are on time.